The government science advisor, Dr. Creek Weldon, will now speak about the science and development of the vaccine, how retractable needles work, and also the results from our first round of genetic sequencing. Dr. Weldon. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Good evening, Bermuda. I am pleased to share with you about how the COVID-19 vaccine works, how it was fast-tracked, and Bermuda's first viral genome sequencing data. A vaccine typically uses a dead or weakened version of the virus to trigger the body's own immune system to create antibodies against it. Antibodies are the body's first line of defense against any foreign intruder. Overall, they lead the body to trigger an immune response resulting in the destruction of the disease-causing agent. If a vaccinated person gets infected with the disease, their body is already equipped to fight it off fast and prevent sickness. Although most people do not get sick, some still do, as the weakened virus can still cause disease. This method of vaccination has been used since 1796. To address this issue of vaccination where it can cause the disease, mRNA vaccines have been pursued since the year I was born, 1990, just gave me my age. Using this method prevents someone getting the disease as it gives your body the instructions needed to create a small piece of the virus. The actual virus itself is not given to the person. This small part that your body will see will trigger the immune response, but cannot give you the disease. mRNA is a type of RNA, or ribonucleic acid, that is naturally occurring in all of our bodies. The M in mRNA stands for messenger and plays a central role in how our body operates. And I'm gonna explain this a little bit further. We have all heard of DNA. DNA is the code of life it is kept safe in each of our cells in the nucleus to prevent it from harm and damage. DNA holds the instructions on how to make every part of our body in the form of protein. In order for DNA to make protein, the message needs to be carried from the nucleus to the protein making part of the cell. This message is carried by the mRNA. This whole process is called the central dogma of molecular biology. I will use a cooking analogy to explain this a little bit further. We all have our treasured family recipes that have been passed down generation to generation. This cookbook is kept extremely safe as we want to pass it down further to future generations. This cookbook is like our DNA. I know in my family, farin pie is our secret family recipe. Although as nice as the recipe is on its own, we cannot eat the recipe book with the instructions. We have to make the farine pie in order to eat it. Bearing in mind that we do not want to put the safety of the cookbook at risk, what we do is copy or write or transcribe the same instructions onto an index card, for example. This way we can get the recipe but do not have to worry about destroying the treasured cookbook. We can also even make multiple copies of this recipe on many index cards and share with our whole family. The index card copy of the recipe is like our mRNA. Now again, having these mobile versions of the recipe is safer, but we still cannot eat it we must still translate the instructions into a tangible form, which is the farine pie. This involves adding step-by-step step what is needed, and ultimately, we have to, the finished product. The farine pie is like all of the proteins in our body, which are the final products of our DNA, which hold the instructions. This process happens for each and everything made in our body. It is happening right now as I speak. mRNA is the key to all happening, as otherwise the DNA instruction would not make it to the place where the protein can be made. A vaccine's aim is to provide active acquired immunity. It is active as opposed to passive because your body has to do some work in order to make you immune. It is acquired 
as it is specific to infectious diseases your body has fought before, as opposed to innate, which is more general to anything that is foreign in your body. The vaccine Bermuda is currently using for its vaccination program is the Pfizer BioNTech mRNA vaccine. It provides the instructions to make the outer spike or S protein of the COVID-19 virus. This spike protein coats the outside of the virus and is how it latches to the respiratory tract of those with COVID-19. By providing the instructions for making this part of the virus, our bodies can make the spike protein ourselves and then trigger the immune system to create antibodies for any potential future infections. As has been stated, I, along with the leaders of our country, received the vaccine yesterday on live TV. At the moment, I'm feeling fine. I only have a, a sore arm from where the needle entered my arm. And I'm very glad that our healthcare professionals have a very thoughtful, safe process which utilizes best practices. This includes using a retractable needle. During my PhD days, I had to routinely use a syringe and needle for some of my experiments. Uh, these were not retractable, and unfortunately, a few times, I did stick myself in the finger. Uh, it was very painful. It happened quickly. You didn't see it coming. And ultimately, I had to stop my experiments to tend to my injury. I commend the Ministry of Health for making the decision to avoid this potential harm by using the retractable needles. I'm now going to talk about another concern, which is how this vaccine was fast-tracked. Only a year ago, at the beginning of 2019, the world was what we call normal. And we had only just heard about some new virus that was affecting China. Today, we have a vaccine that can fight against this virus, and this is a true feat of many decades of science. There are concerns on how these vaccines could be approved so quickly, and the following points hopefully can address this. Number one, academic research on coronaviruses and mRNA vaccines have been going on for decades. As stated before, mRNA vaccines have been studied since 1990. Coronaviruses like SARS and MERS have been studied for decades as well. Once the new SARS-CoV-2 sequence was published in January, the work for this specific vaccine could be started. This is also why COVID-19 PCR testing was available just a few days after the sequence was shared. It's also based on this very advanced technology. Another factor that usually stalls a lot of research is the lack of funding. Due to the pandemic status, this barrier was practically non-existent. Number two, safety and efficacy trials, which usually happen subsequently, happen concurrently. Other phase one and preclinical studies that showed mRNA vaccine platforms were safe were used to approve this approach. Just like every other scientific and medical advancement, Pfizer and BioNTech's large study had to undergo external peer review and another external review to be published in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. The goal of each of these independent review teams is to scrutinize the data inside and out to identify problems before giving approval. It is highly unlikely that all of them overlooked a problem related to safety and efficacy. Number three, manufacturing and distribution planning also happened concurrently with the trials, with much anticipation that the vaccine could be approved at some point. These steps were already discussed to ensure a quick turnaround from the time approval was given to distribution. And number four, emergency approval given due to the urgency, which is the same as all of our COVID-19 kits. Approval is not given if it's unsafe or if the risk outweigh the benefits. What added to this is that two independent mRNA vaccines produced by competing companies both showed safe data and that helped to strengthen the approval process. Finally, I'm gonna to touch on 
very exciting news, which is our first batch of viral genome sequencing. There are three types of testing recommended by WHO, which include the RT-PCR tests, which we currently use to diagnose infection, the serological or antibody test, which is currently used to aid in our epidemiological investigations, and viral genome sequencing. I am excited to inform that Bermuda has its first batch, and I will share some of the findings thus far. Just as we can identify each person with their unique fingerprint, each person's DNA is also unique and can identify them. Viruses, of course, don't have fingers, but they do have DNA or RNA that is unique to each one. By doing viral genome sequencing, we can tell strains apart and know how the virus has spread in our community and across the globe. On October 27th, Bermuda had a British Airways flight, which eventually ended up having 10 positive cases. To investigate this mini outbreak, samples were sent to Public Health England for viral sequencing in the UK. This includes samples from the flight, along with 12 other samples from around the same time. A total of 21 samples were sent, ranging from cases identified between October 27th and November 18th. Initial analysis of the results show that eight strains were present on island during this time, with all being imported. Five of the strains have been imported from the US, two are from the UK, and one is from Asia. What's most important is that none of the two UK strains are the new variant strain, which is lineage B.1.1.7, that has caused the new lockdowns in the UK. Both strains identified at the time are both common UK strains circulating since March of 2020. Oxford nanopore sequencing will be performed on island on a portion of the positive samples from mid-November to December when Bermuda experienced an outbreak in some social settings. We will also look to routinely sequence positive cases to understand how, if any, there are any further mutations and to aid epidemiological investigations. In addition, samples each month will be sent to CARFA for sequencing verification in a similar manner that regular COVID-19 testing is cross-verified at CARFA. As we continue on with this marathon fight against COVID-19, now having more tools in our toolkit, let us all do our part by following the guidelines that have gotten us this far together. Thank you.